In this video, we're going to be looking at two of the outputs that are on the Synchrodyne Expand that tie directly into the Synchrodyne Original. Uh, those are the VCA out and the Wave Folder out. And those are right down here. And th these are the outputs. This set down here, this set of five are outputs that are from the original Synchrodyne that are only uh, accessible if you have the Expand. There is a linear VCA, I believe it's linear, on the original Synchrodyne. So what I'm gonna do is take the main output uh, going to my sound card and plug that into the VCA out. And then normally what you'll hear is the output from the oscillator and the Synchrodyne. So let's turn up this. So we have a normal VCA control. Uh, there is an input uh, for uh, modulation. So what I'm going to do now is I have the oscillator from the Synchrodyne Expand. We're going to take the sawtooth output at a really low frequency and we're going to send that into the VCA control. And when you plug something externally in, this becomes an attenuator for your control signal. So we've got the sawtooth waveform acting as our CV control for the VCA. And we can speed that up. And the reason there's a gap is because it's a it's essentially rectified, right? The VCA only responds to positive control voltage. So the bottom half of the wave, the negative portion, doesn't affect anything. So let's turn this up a little faster. So it will respond at audio rates. There does get to be a little bit of distortion in there. Uh, but there is a VCA and you can have direct access to its output with this output down here. There's also a built-in wave folder. So the wave folder can be used by itself. Uh, it's normally accessed as part of the input to the filter. Uh, but in this case, you have direct access to the wave folder output uh, using the next jack over. So if we move to this output jack, now what I'm going to do is, because wave folders work really nicely with a sine wave, I'm going to use an external signal. So by itself, this can be a VCA or a wave folder. So I'm going to take the sine wave output from my DPO, and I'm going to put that to the filter in. And even though it's the filter in, the filter has nothing to do with it. And we'll see that on the flow chart. But the VCA and the um, wave folder out have nothing to do with the filter. So right now this is just a standalone wave folder. So now if I were to raise this level, you get that really nice type of wave folder that you have on like the DPO. So this is where the uh, Synchrodyne and the Expand can function very well as a complex oscillator. It has a lot of the ingredients you would expect, um, such as a wave folder, uh, all the FM options, hard sync and stuff like that. So uh, this is a really nice sounding wave folder. And again, we control it via CV, so the wave fold uh, amount can be controlled. Again, we'll just use the saw output from the second oscillator. So now let's uh, turn the attenuator up. So there is the wave folder being controlled. There's also a knob here called wave folder level, and that sets the wave folder input. You can think of it as kind of in a second attenuator. This was normally set on a trim pot on the back of the original Synchrodyne, uh, but they added it as a control on the front panel of the Synchrodyne Expand because uh, they had some room to play with. So we could just keep that up. Okay. 
but it's a really nice wave folder sound. Like I said, it sounds a lot like the DPO. Normally you've got the saw output going into it, um, which actually sounds pretty good. Uh, but I also like putting in something like either a sine or a triangle wave. So this is the block diagram of the section we're interested in. Uh, this is all mostly in the Synchrodyne 1. And remember the gray section uh, are things that are facilitated by the Synchrodyne expand. So these are going to be really easy to follow, unlike some of these other ones. Uh, so for the VCA, you know, the kind of oval-shaped ones are jacks, circles are knobs, and then squares are sort of functions, and then the Diamonds indicate a switch or decision point. So uh, the VCA one is easy. You've got your audio input. It goes through the VCA, and you get your VCA output. Easy as pie. Now, if you did not have the Synchrodyne expand, this would continue on to the wave folder. If you follow the wave folder, it's similarly uh, straightforward. The audio input goes through the wave folder, and then up and to the wave folder output. There is a wave folder level control, like I said, which is added by the expand. And uh, the attenuator handles the amount of folding that goes on here. And the VCA output and the wave folder output, like we saw on the front panel, are only available on the expand. If we didn't have the expand, this would basically uh, follow the diagram directly into the filter. With the expand, uh, it does make a brief detour um, up here, through the mixer, into the compressor, back down, and then into the filter. So that's the basic layout of what happens when you have the expand, is the wave folder and everything has a chance to go through the compressor before ending up going to the filter. But uh, if you just have the, the Synchrodyne, you go through the VCA, through the wave folder, if it's active or not, and then into the filter. With the expand, you have the VCA output, you have the wave folder output, and the VCA wave folder first goes through the compressor and then comes down into the filter. So that's the Synchrodyne, and the Synchrodyne expand is a standalone VCA or wave folder. Uh, so just one of the many tools in its toolbox.